Hey everyone, let's build up the heat axe for the TriStar Zaku. New Type is a fast and reliable source of gunpla paints and tools shipped internationally. Purchasing with my affiliate link newtype.us slash frostysnow also helps support me with a small commission. Here is the SH Studio 160th Zaku TriStar Heat Axe. This was actually originally Cookie's kit, which he ended up trading with me for my SH Studio Dome because we ended up really liking each other's kits. Cookie bought this kit from a Korean website, which sold the body conversion and the three weapons separately as a set. However, because Cookie pre-ordered this, we got to choose one of the weapons as a pre-order gift and he chose the heat axe. Good choice. I think it's half the charm. This metal rod is actually not as heavy as I thought it would be. Oh, this fits in so well. It's gonna stand like this. What the heck? It's really hard to get a proper angle on this. I feel like I'm making a freaking magical wand. Gosh. Hmm. Look at the way it has this gap here. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I'm <laughs> 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 What game are you playing, Cookie? I don't remember, but uh, this is... You've been playing that for months and you don't remember the name of the game? This is trending. <laughs> Let's get back to fixing that gap. I soaked my parts in hot water briefly and chose to use some elastic bands and a clamp to hold the clear part in place. What tools you use really depends on the shape and size of the parts. Some parts are so big and awkward that a clamp can't really hold it down. It actually worked really well for me and you can see the gap is mostly gone. However, I'm gonna show you later in the video how this can also go wrong. Throughout this video, I'm going to show some of the mistakes I made, which I don't normally feel there is enough time for in really compact full build videos. I hope it helps. I don't have to, but I want to reinforce these parts that are going to hold the weapon together. How I decide where to put the wires is, I see this is the weak point already, right? This part here, it's really thick. It has a lot of surface area. If I really need to, I can put a little glue here. But this part, it's quite thin. The hold is going to be a bit weak. Also, at the end of this peg here, it's actually just hollow. So I can't drill a wire through the peg into the other part, which is what I would normally do. So I'm going to wire it up actually here to here. And I usually start drilling the wire from the kind of smaller, weaker part and then put it up against the bigger and stronger part. Put the wire in. Try to make sure it'll fit into both pegs and then I know the wire is in about the right place and then I just press on it. And I get a little mark. I haven't drilled all the way but I just want to check the spot. Make sure it seems to work. Okay, yeah, great. And I'm just gonna keep drilling the rest of the way. Great. And I've done that with the other parts of the weapon too. I am a little bit worried about this clear part warping back to leaving a really big gap here over time. So I think I'm going to magnetize this. I drilled this hole a little too low. I didn't realize that the part was like this. And so it shows through. Uh, so I'm just going to putty it up. And if you ever make any mistakes like that, just a little putty. And later a bit of sanding will fix it up. And it doesn't have to be perfect because this part is going to be not very visible anyways. Make sure they're both the same in direction. After all the drilling and handling of the clear part, I accidentally bent it out of shape again and soaked it in hot water again. However, I left it in there for way too long this time while concentrating on my build and it 
bent the sharp edge of my clear part. I did what I could to fix it up with some sanding. It's hard to say how long you should leave it in the water for because it depends on the part and water temperature, but do keep checking it occasionally. I matched a panel liner size to this little knob on the back of the emblem. I used a little bit of oil marker and get a little mark on the shield. I scribed a little bit, fits into there, so I'm going to scribe now this nub here. After final assembly, I move on to the first round of surfacer, which will help me see any imperfections on the parts and give a little more grip when I panel line. Even though I planned for my entire kit to be mostly black, and in theory, don't really need to use panel line accent, I still rescribe the panel lines for a few reasons. One, some of the panel lines are quite uneven, a bit shallow here and there. Two, deep panel lines will make masking easier for the knife to cut the masking tape. Three, I do still plan to panel line accent some of the metallic parts. Sorry, I've kind of lost my voice, but I'm going to use this metal primer. And I've decided not to switch this metal part out for a plastic because I feel we were given a metal for the purpose of probably holding the weight of the weapon, which is really quite heavy. And I feel like over time, a piece of plastic might bend. Because these long parts were a little awkward to clip, I ended up sticking them into my high density foam blocks, let them dry, and then paint the other side. This is my second round of surfacer after sanding. I was curious about how this metal primer works. I can see where I painted it and where I didn't. And the painted part looks really just like I painted on a clear top coat. It's a bit smoother. Whereas the other side, it's still, well, it just looks like metal. Notice that I paint all of these parts on plat plate with double-sided tape. I do this for parts that don't have a proper peg to clip. After the parts dry completely, if necessary, I paint the other side. This is going to be related to another mistake I make later. I also tried out a variety of metallic paints and these are the ones that I chose. I'm actually very impressed with the Odenkan metallic paints. I really like the very clear difference between these two metallics. This one has more of kind of like a reddish sheen and also the metallic is really really fine. Whereas these other ones looks a little bit more coarse. I think I'm going to go with these ones. And of course, always, always, I always use the Kung's Metallic Silver. Even though I already used a metal primer, I still use my gray surfacer as well on my metal rod just to be extra safe. I also paint up all the metallic parts, which I will be masking off. There's really two ways to mask. One is to cut up the masking tape and stick them on piece by piece. Another way is to stick the entire piece of tape on the part and then cut it with your knife along the panel line. I use the first method here because there are no panel lines to this part where I need to mask and I didn't scribe it in because I thought it'd be easy enough to mask without. However, for some other parts that are harder to mask, I did scribe new panel lines. I had this all planned out after pre-assembly. Building resin kits really require a lot of planning for the whole process to go smoothly. Here, I hand paint in some of the details with a toothpick or brush. I've got a whole video tutorial detailing how I do that.
If you're wondering about the blacks and top coats I used, I actually did a lot of experimentation and I'll talk more about that in the final build video because there is only so much I can fit in this one. Notice that I do also panel line some of my black parts because I find cutting into the masking tape and panel lines with the art knife leaves some marks which panel line accent helps to cover up. Sometimes people ask me how to avoid getting dust on their parts. Not only do I wipe my whole booth before I paint, but I realized that as I was spraying my shield, I kept getting lots of weird white specks on here as I was top coating, which I didn't get on other parts. I realized that this plat plate that I had uh, used double-sided tape on and been painting with is so full of cracked paint because I've been using this over and over that that is what is giving the white specks on my part. I've made a completely new piece. Another thing that I haven't realized and I made a really big mistake while working with um, having two finishes, this taped part here is actually the gloss finish and I had top coated that and I knew that I still had to do decals but somehow it just didn't cross my mind that I, I'll have to top coat the decal because it just seemed like such a natural process to finish painting everything and, and then decal. I really don't want to like redo any of the masking for this gloss. So I decided to just have the decal only on the matte parts because I've already got this smaller contrasting gloss part here. I think having the decal here would bring too much attention to these parts. I decided to put the decals just here, here and here and then I'll still just be able to top coat this part only. I have worked with having two different finishes like a matte and a gloss on the black before for my black sazabi but it's been such a long time and I didn't have to do so much masking and color separation on one piece because it was a bandai kit but um, resin comes in big chunks. This video was a compilation of brief clips of a project that took hours to complete. If you'd like to see real-time, unedited videos of my workflow and build process, please check out my Patreon. I have unedited footages of this build and previous projects available only to my patrons. Your support helps me continue making more and better quality videos for the Gumpla community. Hello. We're waiting with our popcorn. And I'm gonna go get coffee for us. Okay, please show me the poster. Wow. Yeah, 
맛있겠다. 이야. Look, Cookies Korean, he has to eat a hamburger with a fork and knife. And they give you a fork and knife too in Korea. Mmm, what's up? My stem on top. What did you think of the movie, Cookie? This style is very old style, but I think it's very interesting. This character is very different style, so many people like this movie. Thanks, Cookie. Yeah, thank you. Actually, Guardians of the Galaxy 1 was always my favorite movie. I always said it was my favorite movie since it uh, came out, and 3 was really great. It has all the good characteristics of 1 that I really like. Funny, action, family, touching, great music. This is mine. Wow. I am okay. I'd like to thank my Patreon supporters who allow me to build, paint, and produce videos while not having to worry about making a living at the same time. Patreon is a way for anyone to support their favorite creator and content. You can also join us on Discord to chat with me and fellow Gumpla hobbyists. Check it out at patreon.com slash frostedsnow. Thanks for watching!